40 light years from us. There's a world that looks a lot like Venus. Only unlike the most sweltering hellish planet in the solar system, this not so distant planet could actually be the next Earth. This world is called Gliese 12b. That's right, I'm venturing out of the solar system to find an exoplanet that I won't die on. And yeah, 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 I know I've said that before, but I'm feeling much better about Gliese 12b. Way better than Kepler 22b. I mean, it's like 595 light years closer to this solar system, and all stars and no weight make Chase a happy boy. Estimated travel time, 200 years. Okay, that's longer than I expected. Location, Pisces constellation. Yeah, so Gliese 12b orbits this red dwarf star in the Pisces constellation, which means the planet is creative, compassionate, intuitive. Oh, oh, unless Pisces is placed in the seventh house, then it's bad at communication. Uh, Chase, astrology doesn't apply to planets. That's really naive what if guy. I mean, Saturn literally has a ring on it. Go girl. Saturn is a gas giant and it has many rings. You know, not everybody is as into monogamy as you are, Rico, okay? And you always take his side. What's going on? Did I program you this way? Whatever, I'll get over it. Rico, now's the time for my favorite phrase. Initiate landing sequence. That really should be my catchphrase. What do y'all think? Very little is known about Gliese 12b because exoplanets don't emit any detectable light, making it very hard for scientists to observe them. Still, scientists can deduce some basic characteristics using the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, otherwise known as TESS. This satellite stares at the sky and measures the changing brightness of a star in 20-second to 30-minute intervals as the exoplanet passes the star it orbits. We don't need a satellite for that. I can stare at the sky with my own blinky balls. If only it was that easy. Oh, man, I almost had it. Now everything has a big red circle in the middle. Well, nice try. Unfortunately, tests can only give us data on exoplanets that pass between their star and Earth. Fortunately, Gliese 12b does just that. So this is how we know that it's roughly the same size as Earth, but is about 15 times closer to its star. stats on this red dwarf loading stats at what point did this red dwarf make its way to mordor well gliese might be orbiting real close to its star but like the space gods it's only about a quarter the size of earth's sun and with only 60 percent of the surface temperature yeah chase can live with that You know, if this planet's sun had anywhere near the size and heat of Earth's sun, I'd be dead already. I'd be a ball of flame. And my personal preference is to not be a ball of flame. Correct. Because of its proximity, Gliese 12b receives 1.6 times more energy from its star than Earth does from the sun. Oh, yeah, we, we could put a solar panel over here. 
in here. Oh, oh, it ain't over here. Oh, ho, ho. you know, this could be the first fully renewable planet in the cosmos. Well, that we know of, at least. Oh, it's a bit warm here. Rico, what's the uh, temperature reading? 62.2 degrees Celsius. Oh, okay. Oh, man, I'd be worried about bringing you humans to this planet. I mean, you've done a great job heating up Earth already, pumping those greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. This planet is 62 degrees already, so clean energy only here, period. I'm looking at you, Kyle. Yeah, oh, yeah. I just cover this whole section with solar panels. This would be really nice. Put a little sofa over there. Well, scientists haven't been able to collect any data about Gliese 12b's atmosphere. We don't know how the planet would change with any additional gas emissions. <laughs> what? Well, not a problem. Rico, give me an atmospheric reading. Stat. Calculating. Atmosphere composition is 52% carbon dioxide, 44% nitrogen, 3% miscellaneous gases. Yeah, all right. Well, all that CO2 explains the heat. If Gliese 12b had no atmosphere at all, it'd be around 42 degrees. And if we had any more CO2, we'd be getting up to Venus temperatures. <laughs> that would not be pleasant. Scientists have only observed a rocky surface on Gliese 12b, but since it's in the habitable zone of a star, it could very well have water. Chase, mind doing some exploring? Yeah, yeah, I'll look for some water. I mean, I'm thirsty anyways. And another thing that's important to know before any of you guys move here is that this planet orbits the star every 12.8 days. <laughs> Do you understand the severity of what that means? Yeah, a New Year's resolution every 13 days. My resolution last year was to sign up for the What If Explorers Club on Patreon. That was an easy one. Hey, that should be your resolution too. Gliese 12b has almost four times the Earth's mass. That means that even though it's the same size as Earth, its gravitational pull is much stronger. You know, it is a lot harder to walk here now. You know, not that what if guy would think to ask. Still no signs of water. Rico, scan the surroundings for water. Scanning. Toot toot. Movement detected. What? Movement detected? You, you mean we're not alone out here? Oh, no, 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 no. We, we don't know what this thing is. It could have big claws, big teeth, or, or worse, big feet. Oh, I hate feet. Uh, uh. Oh, well, hey there, little guy. You're okay. Your feet are an average size. <laughs> Not scared. That's just got something in my throat. <clears throat> okay. Animal life on Gliese 12b? That means surely there must be water here somewhere. Rico, track that animal. We're gonna follow it to a water source. Where did it go? Ah, oh, crap. You know, Rico, while you're tracking that little dude, scan for other alien life. None detected within a 10 kilometer radius. Oh man. I hope this little guy isn't alone out here. That'd be so sad. Imagine being trapped on an exoplanet all by yourself, the only multicellular organism. <sighs> At least I have Rico, when he's not malfunctioning, which is most of the time. So I guess me and this critter have a lot in common. Affirmative. You know what? You don't have to be alone out here anymore, little guy. I'm naming you Charlie, and you're, you're coming with me. Jason Charlie, exploring the universe. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, I like that song. Come here, little buddy, come here. Oh, come on, you like the sound of that. Sing it with me. Chase and Charlie. Chase, come back here. Come back here. Come here, little buddy. Come here. Ah. <laughs> ow, 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 oh, ow. Charlie, you bit my finger. Oh, Suit decompressing. Oh, 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 no. Oh, you stupid stock website 3D animation. Oh, no. Damn it. 
on this stupid planet. Oh, I was so close. Stupid little dwarf stupid. like there wasn't any oxygen in the atmosphere for Chase to breathe. <laughs> but don't worry, he goes on these adventures all the time, dies, and somehow he always comes back. And little Charlie there gets to continue roaming Gleesa 12B, a free agent. We'll see if Chase finds any more pets on his next adventure. But that's a story for another What If.